more on that matchup with A&M and Arkansas and, and what you kind of see as, as the keys to it. Yeah, you know, it's an interesting matchup in a lot of ways because they have um, some similarities in the issues they're looking to address. Obviously, A&M wants to be able to stretch the football a little bit more um, in their passing attack. they got a lot of new guys uh, at the wide receiver position that they're trying to get more acclimated to what they're doing offensively. And the same can be said uh, for Arkansas. I mean, you can look at the first two games. We were talking about a guy that's um, coming into the season, the top passer in the conference in Austin Allen knowing that you got um, a ton of turnover at the receiver position, you know, with Hatcher, even starting the season uh, with a healthy Cornelius or fully healthy Cornelius, I think hurt a lot because he was your known commodity. Um, you know, no Hatcher, no Sprinkle, no Morgan, who was, you know, in many ways, uh, you don't want to call it a security blanket because he was a good player. Um, so you look at those two teams offensively, and I think there's a lot of similarities in that regard. Both are trying to figure out what they're doing up front offensively uh, along the line of scrimmage. Um, so this could be a turning point for both of these programs um, and could kind of set expectations uh, and, and maybe the trajectory of the rest of the season for, uh, for both Arkansas and AM. and Arkansas's offensive line fans have been very critical of it. What are your thoughts on how they've played so far through two games? Uh, you know, I'll not pretend to have studied them in depth. You know, I've watched parts of games. I haven't sat down and looked at the game film. We haven't had their matchups yet. We haven't seen any teams that they would have already played. Um, so it's hard to speak to that. I do know that, obviously, um, you want as much production as you possibly can, uh, not only in the ground game. It's not always on those guys up front. You know, if you can't throw the football well, the defenses aren't stupid. You know, then they're going to try to play the run. Um, so the better that passing game gets, that'll take some of the pressure off of those guys. they got to protect, and uh, that's a, a complimentary piece, too, where the backs uh, have to contribute. Receivers got to get open. Quarterbacks got to make quicker decisions. And I think this Coach, uh, Coach Enos mentioned earlier uh, during this bye period that uh, Austin's got to kind of cycle through his reads a little bit quicker and get the ball out of his hands. It's two games. And you got two games into the season, and you'd like to think that if the greatest improvement a team makes from week one to week two, that if you get a bye week in week three, then you can have a great deal of improvement. And certainly I'm sure that's what Arkansas is looking for. Arkansas run against this A&M front seven? Where yeah, I think so. Yeah, yeah I, I think that, um, you know, Louisiana was able to run the football relative with relative effectiveness versus, uh, versus A&M last week. You know, A&M, uh, they lost the playmakers on the outside from a pressure standpoint. They're going to have to generate that from the second and third levels probably in half. Um, you know, they're probably best position on defenses. They're defensive tackles. Um, but, you know, they're, they're kind of compromised on the edges. Um, so, yeah, you know, you've seen teams that have been able to run between the tackles. Louisiana was able to rip off some nice runs between the tackles. Um, so there's opportunity there, and it just all depends on how both these teams have responded since their last contest. Arkansas having more time to prepare, I think you probably give a little bit of an edge to. Go ahead, Tom. What kind of sense did you come away from College Station with after last week and kind of the mood, what's going on around there? You know, it wasn't overly positive coming in, that's for sure. I mean, they weren't, uh, uh, they weren't thrilled. And I'm speaking from the inside out. You know, those coaches, uh, they recognize the challenge. All these programs, really, you know, it's so funny because they know what's going on more than any of us ever do. They recognize the deficiencies. A&M's got a bunch of turnover due to injury. They had a bunch of turnover due to graduation. They got a bunch of young faces in there. At the same time, they haven't been real pleased with their consistency. That was the word that you heard more than anything else. They're looking to put together four quarters. And if they if they do and they play their best ball, then uh, that's a pretty competitive football team. The problem is they haven't done it. And they've had three chances at it. And you haven't seen uh, anything close to a solid four quarters yet. What's it like for you doing studio work and calling a game on the weekend? What's that challenge like? Well, on the weekends, I just do the games. Um, And this year, we're doing the film room, which is uh, you get to kind of sit down, peek behind the curtain of some of these programs, which is uh, a lot of fun. You don't spend as much time looking at the conference at large because of that, because you're looking at really just two close contests. Um, And so you end up kind of, you find yourself really kind of uh, forcing your way into paying attention to some of these other games, what's going on in some of these other programs, because. You get so deep for game prep, and then you got to go relatively deep for that film room show um, that you find yourself only seeing maybe two or three, and if, once we get to conference uh, play, uh, only four four teams a week. You mentioned how tough it is in the division. Uh, is there any one or two things you can think of why Arkansas hasn't been able to get to the upper echelon of the, of the SEC? 
I mean, who, who's in the upper echelon of the SEC? Alabama. Alabama. I mean, it's kind of a one one team echelon. Is that even an echelon? I mean, it's it's more like a peak. Um, but it's it's you know it's a fair conversation because every year you come in, you think there's kind of an upper tier, a middle tier, a lower tier. You know, that middle tier might be really really crowded um, because right now um, you know, it looks like there's one team and then there's other aspirants towards that one team and the consistency that Alabama has been able to put together. Um, it's unprecedented. I mean, you look at it, especially in uh, certainly post-BCS era, we haven't seen any teams be able to do this. You think about Nebraska in the 90s, they didn't string, they, even they didn't string together uh, this level of accomplishment. Um, and it's more of a national game now. So um, I don't know who's on the upper echelon. I'm, I'm starting to wonder if we can even use that term anymore. Is that good or bad for the league right now? With, without? I don't know. It just is. Whether it is or not, it is. I mean, we'll find out at the end of the year. We thought coming into the year that Auburn was going to be the team, and, and who knows? Maybe Auburn will be. But we haven't seen a team, I think, through three games for most of these programs that appears to be able to contend with Alabama at a full strength. A lot of things can happen. You know, injuries happen. You don't wish it on anybody for any program for any reason. Uh, but it is part of the game. Uh, and so there's a lot of football left in front of us. But right now, through the sample size that we've got, um, it's hard to point to any team that says, I'll tell you what, this is the team that might represent this conference as its champion other than, than Alabama. You mentioned that you don't like to use the term hot seat, but a lot of fans around the state have put Brett Bielema on the hot seat. Do you think this weekend he's coaching for his job? I don't know. That was a good Steve Spurrier. Who, who else you got? <laughs> I do other ones. Um, uh, Mac Brown, I do Coach Brown. I do, uh, I do a couple others. Maybe we'll unveil them as the season continues. But, you know, it's important to point out that uh, for Coach Spurrier anyway, um, it's out of reverence more than anything else. And coming from a Georgia guy, that's high praise. But I got a good deal of, uh, of respect for him, not only as a coach but as a person, uh, certainly as a player as well. But um, college football is better with Coach Spurrier in it, I think. Coach Brown, what do you think about Texas this year so far? I'm sorry? Coach Brown, what do you think about Texas? Oh, yeah, no, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> I'm assuming you do the 11 o'clock SEC games, right? Not or, always. No. Not so, always. We do, um, like this week we'll do the uh, 3.30 game. Uh, usually that's a 4 o'clock game. Um, but this week it's 3.30, and I'm not real sure why. Um, but we've done, I think we've done one or two noon games um, already this year. And so we rotate with the other crew, and then the 7.30 prime crew is the same throughout the year. I saw last year struggled near the goal, Arkansas offense struggled near the goal line. Again, at TCU, being an offensive lineman yourself, and what, what's the difference between having success and failure down in that area? Well, you know, it depends on what play's being called, of course. But, you know, whenever you look at a goal line, you're, you're dealing with a compressed part of the field, so it's obviously a lot more bodies. Um, space is a premium, and sometimes you have to be able to create it, and that's really difficult. You know, those guys – those defensive linemen are on scholarship too. So are those linebackers. Um, you got safeties that don't have to play anywhere, but right on top of the line of scrimmage, right? So somebody's got to win, and oftentimes you'll find it to where, even if the front or whoever's blocking does their job, that back's got to bring his own block. There's going to be somebody that can scrape to the hole, uh, and he's just going to have to run through a tackle. Sometimes they're able to do that. Sometimes they aren't. 